With Simon Borg, I'm Jason Skeeney. We're here to preview the Seattle Sounders against Santos Laguna in the semifinals of Champions League. This game, 10 p.m. Eastern time, Tuesday night on Fox Soccer Channel. And Simon, these teams met in Champions League last year. It did not go well. Seattle got off to a 2-1 victory at home, but ended up losing 7-3 on aggregate after getting pasted 6-1 down in Torreon. What should we expect from the matchup this year? Well, Jason, these two teams are heading in opposite directions right now. You have Seattle Sounders off to their worst start in MLS history, still winless this season. Then you have Santos on the other hand. They just narrowly missed out on their fifth straight Mexican Mexican League victory in a row on 93rd minute own goal cost them that just this past weekend. All right, what Seattle does have going for them, they are the first MLS team to knock off a Mexican team since the Champions League format changed, of course. That was Tigres in the last round. For more on this matchup, let's head out to Seattle where Andrew Wiebe is. Thanks, guys. Andrew Wiebe here in Tukwila, Washington at the Sounders Starfire training facility. Of course, all the conversation today revolving around that league worst start in MLS. The guy's not worried, though. A lot of talk of an escape, a new opportunity, a blank slate on which to turn their season around the big question marks though came in Eddie Johnson Obafemi Martins they spent much of the day indoors and their status is still unknown according to Siggy Smith but still this team feels like it has something to prove come Tuesday night we're doing pretty much the same thing as we've always done um, we haven't changed the way we play we don't approach the game any less we're not we don't care less we don't have you know we're not trying to lose games you know it's not it, we're trying to win the game and so I think um, we'll do the same thing we've always done tomorrow night also we're going to come out we're going to try to play the role we can play football and um, do what we can I mean I think I think I hope that we've learned from our past mistakes but we know that they're you know a very very good team so you know, we just have to do whatever we can do to uh, you know, better our position when we go down down to Santos. Now we need to, uh, you know, we need to get get a good result at home. They've, uh, you know, banged away a lot of goals on everybody at their place, so we better get four or something like that to make sure we're up. No, can't go that because you don't want to leave yourself open. You know, I think we want to win the game, uh, put ourselves in a good position down there. I think we learned a valuable lesson down there last year when we played there, especially for the Rebel fans. We want to. You know, play exciting soccer. You know, score goals. We want the pressure on them, and you know, do all those things. And you know, I don't think we've quite done that this year. And you know, sometimes the, the cup games are a distraction, and everyone dreads them. And, but now, the way things, you know, we're just kind of, you know, sitting in last place. Sometimes we need these things to you know, just give us a little jump start to our season. Well, contrary to what some might believe, it's a relaxed vibe here in Tuckwill. The Sounders. They do not peer against the wall. They know they have an opportunity after making history against Tigres in the quarterfinals. Of course, last year, this did not go so well for them against Santos Laguna. They'll have to get a good result here in Seattle. Certainly, they believe they can do it and then go back to Torreon and handle business. That's all we have here in Tukwila, Washington. Back to you guys in New York. Thanks, Andrew. So it seems that Obafemi Martins and Eddie Johnson could be in doubt for this game. We'll see if it's just gamesmanship. But if these guys do start, Matt Doyle and Dan Hayek have more on what they need to bring. Thanks, guys. Matt, on Saturday, we got a chance to see Eddie Johnson and Obafemi Martins partner together from the start we of the game. Know? Well, yeah, that's a good point. They only combined for one shot on target. Uh, do you expect them to start again against Santos Laguna and have any more success in their second start together? Well, I, I think they probably will start together if they're fit. Obafemi Martins came off after 62 minutes, looked like he took a knock. Eddie Johnson, about 15 minutes later, grabbing his hamstring a little bit. So that's the number one concern, even more than can these guys play together, right. is will they be fit? But if they do play together, I, I think we're going to have to see Eddie Johnson turning around, holding the ball up more, playing more as a traditional number nine, and then allowing Obafemi Martins uh, those those angles and those uh, channels to run off of him. Martins is just murder off the ball, and he's very, very good facing up. I think the, uh, the Sounders have to game plan around that, and EJ has to adjust his game. Now let's switch to Santos Laguna forward line. Hercules Gomez always performs well against MLS clubs. I think it's seven goals in the last couple of years in Champions League. Talk about what he does and whether or not uh, he can exploit the Seattle back line. It's all about movement. 
with her. There's a something I like to say is that ninety percent of the game takes place off the ball, yeah. and, and it's true. And and Hercules Gomez understands this as well as maybe anybody uh, in the U.S. player pool, and he gives a clinic on it every time uh, Santos plays an MLS team. He he just finds those gaps so so well. He reads the game a half step earlier than most teams. And and what's going to cause Seattle trouble is that uh, Santos moved the ball so well, so they force the defense to make decisions about do I step up here or do I pass him off to the central midfield. When those decisions are being made, that's when Hercules goes, mm -hmm. and that's when they find him. Uh, it, it is the type of game where you expect him to, to get on the board. Uh, Seattle can't let that happen. All right, well, let's kick it back to the guys in New York. Hercules Gomez always seems to garner a lot of attention when Santos comes to the U.S. Here's Jonah Friedman on why he's become such a thorn in the side of MLS teams. Hey everybody, Jonah Friedman here, managing editor of MLSsoccer.com. You might be asking yourself, why all the attention on Hercules Gomez? Sure, he's a World Cup veteran, a U.S. national team guy. Well, it's pretty simple. There is nothing that motivates an athlete more than being overlooked and discarded time and time again. And if you look at Hercules Gomez's career, it's certainly the case. Let's take a look at his resume. Go all the way back to 2001 when his pro career started. He was a 19-year-old. He was overlooked by Durango in Mexico. He left that team, worked his way back up into the spotlight, finally earned a developmental contract with the LA Galaxy, and he did well there. He scored some big goals, but never really found a groove under Steve Sampson or Frank Yallop. After the 2006 season, Gomez was traded to Colorado, and he scored some big goals there too, including the first in Dick's Sporting Goods Park history. But he tore his ACL that season, too, and it set him back quite a bit. He was traded in September of 2008 to Kansas City. And when he was there, he just never really clicked with Peter Vermees, saw his minutes dwindled, wasn't offered a new contract at the end of the 2009 season, and figured, you know what, I need a new place to prove myself. So he went to Mexico. And what happened there made Herc a legend. He scored 10 goals at Puebla, where he played under current Chivas USA coach Chelis, tied for the Mexican Golden Boot. It was the first time an American did so in a foreign league. Forced his way back into the U.S. national team picture for the first time in three years. Made the World Cup team and earned himself a big money transfer to Pachuca. But once again, he ended up being a fall guy for a team's struggles. Transfer listed by Pachuca after the 2011 Clausura season. Ended up at Estudiantes Tecos, where again he was sold after the 2010 Apertura season. And now here he is again at Santos Laguna, one of the powers of Mexican soccer. And you know what? He saves his biggest performance against MLS teams, unfortunately. You go back to last year's Champions League, he scored three goals over two legs to knock out the Seattle Sounders, and then scored another three goals over two legs to knock out Toronto FC in the semifinals. Did it again this year, scored a goal to help knock out the Houston Dynamo. So guess what? If you're the Seattle Sounders, it's pretty easy to figure out who you're going to key on. And you know what? It might not matter. He's going to be extra motivated for this one, as he always has been. If I'm the Sounders, I'm looking out for her. Thanks, Jonah. Again, this game, 10 p.m. Eastern time on Fox Soccer Channel, Tuesday night. Simon, give me your last thoughts here. Jason, if Seattle has a chance, they have to do the business at home. Santos Laguna, away to MLS teams in CONCACAF competition. They've lost four of six matches. Then they've done the business at home. Santos beating MLS teams all six times they faced them. 20 to 4, the goal differential. But the question here is, will Seattle's crowd come and show up for this game? They didn't have their usual 30,000 plus crowd for the Tigres series. Does Seattle want it as much as the club does? All right, I have to assume we're going to see a massive crowd out there. Tuesday night, again, Fox Soccer Channel, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Don't forget to tune back to MLSsoccer.com tomorrow for more on the LA Monterey series.